Oh my God, we're alive at five. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's a Hi. surprise. It's Tuesday, March 6th. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we are joined by content producer Matt Rhoda. Hi, everybody. And an amazing guest, Papa Gay in the house. Woo! Tamira Gray from What's in This Island is here. Oh, I like a drum roll. Yeah. yeah. It's a little Papa Gay drum roll. <laughs> uh, so, first, let's talk about today's top five. Olivier nominations came out this morning. Beth, who got nominated? Who didn't get, no, I'm just kidding. We won't <laughs> talk about who didn't get nominated. We will talk about who got nominated because it's a record-breaking year for the Olivier's. This is the Lawrence Olivier Awards. This is the equivalent, they say, the UK Tonys. Well, you have to break records if you do Hamilton. That's the rule, there right? Oh, just Hamilton has steal to break my thunder, records. why don't you? Right under That's right. Side. So Hamilton was honored with 13 Olivier nominations. Beating 11 was the previous record held by Hairspray and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Oh. Both had 11. So all so of those... So beat it by two. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. A lot of the actors got nominated. A lot of the actors got nominated. Yep. And of course, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is a play, so there were some... some Fewer awards that they were up for. I can't even talk. Let's just move on. Um, also, The Ferryman, which we keep on talking about, the Jez Butterworth, Butterworth play that's coming in the fall was nominated. Angels in America, with some um, interesting flip flops of Andrew Garfield was nominated for lead. That role was supporting when it was on Broadway, so mm -hmm. that's interesting. Also, James McArdle, who plays Lewis, was nominated. It was featured on Broadway. Featured, not supporting. In the movies, it's that's supporting Oscars. on Broadway. It's featured. Thank it's you, Paul Wontorek. That's correct. Audrey McDonald was nominated for her first Olivier Award wow. for first Lady she Day. For Lady Day. She made her, her London right. debut. Right. Uh, anyway, the Olivier's will happen on April 8th. They will be hosted by Catherine Tate. Who's Catherine Tate? Catherine Tate is a comedian and an actress. We saw her in Assassin's Ball. I'm sure you remember. Uh, anyway, look at the site for the full list because it's quite long. <laughs> Um, we also got some pretty unfortunate news this morning early on about Ruthie and Miles. Paul, why don't you tell us more about that? This was horrible. Broadway, th I heard about this late last night yeah. and today, you know, it was all over social media. Ruthie Ann Miles, who we love, who won a Tony Award for The King and I, was in a horrible car accident in Brooklyn. Um, her four-year-old daughter, Abigail, was killed. Uh, a, a woman ran a red light. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruthie was, she is now in stable condition. She's pregnant. Um, she was with her friend, Lauren Liu. Um, and it, it was it's horrible so I two mean, children were actually killed yes yes yeah. it, it, was, a, it was horrible it was all over it was all over the news today um and she's in the hospital and there's a gofundme that was set up by uh jack stevens who's a company manager i right. believe that's right uh and over you know it's, it's been up for 14 hours and it's already raised i just checked two hundred and forty two thousand oh dollars um as of right now so please our thoughts are with are, are with Ruthie and her family and and uh, Lauren Liu's family and um, it's just horrible. And if you can give, please consider giving. And if you can't give, share the news uh, on social media. Maybe maybe friends can help. But you know the Broadway community really comes together to help their own. They and this do. is this is one of those moments. They do. Yeah. Uh, we also got some new casting today for Anastasia. Beth. Okay, I'm going to switch gears here. It's a little hard to do, but I'm going to switch gears to Anastasia. Um, we, so uh, Derek Klenna and Caroline O'Connor will be playing their last performance on March 25th at the Broadhurst. So we found out today that Vicki Lewis, who has been on Broadway many times. Oh my God, Vicki Lewis was incredible in Damn Yankees Revival with B.B. Newworth and Victor Garber. I'm old, people. I'm over <laughs> 40. I saw it. But she's she also sang she Shoeless Joe from Hannibal Moe. Oh. And she was, she was amazing. Oh, yeah. All anyway. right. So she'll play Countess Lily. And Zach Adkins, who was the understudy, will play Dimitri. And they will be starting... When will they be starting? On March 27th. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, Frankie Grande. Frankie Grande, all, big brother fame, been on Broadway. He's joining Cruel Intentions. Paul? Frankie James Grande. Frankie J. People, you might know his sister, too. <laughs> she's, she's something. Ariana Grande. I mean, she, also I mean, a Broadway alum. I mean, amazing. It's so funny, because we, we first knew Frankie as one of the guys in Mamma Mia. That's right, ensemble for years. member. Like, yes. he was in Mamma Mia That's for a very long time. Uh, and now he's a Broadway.com former vlogger when he was in... The final Countdown from Rock of Ages. Rock, uh, I love when you remember the names <laughs> of the vlogs. It's like, you like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he's going to play Blaine in Cruel Intentions, the musical, starting March 18th down at La Poisson Rouge. And, I love uh, when you do a French It seems moment. like perfect casting, and he is going to be amazing. So welcome back, Frankie. And last but not least, we have a new vlog, the first episode of a brand new vlog on, on the site today. Beth, tell us about it. 
So this is called Beach Bum, and in 10 years you can ask me, what was the name of that vlog? And I'll say Beach Bum. <laughs> it's Paul Alexander Nolan, who's the star of Escape the to Bum. Margaritaville. The yeah. Beach Bum yeah. in the show. Yeah. Tully is his role. Role. He. Uh, it's really fun. It's really fun. He does a great job. And he shows you what he normally wears as a Canadian fellow, and then he changes into his Beach Bum wear. Mm. Watch it. You'll see. As he gets ready for the view. Really cute. So okay. check that out. I'm going to get out of here. Okay, Beth. How about that? You get oh, by the way, everyone, it's 18 years today since I met Beth Stevens. This is her 18th anniversary yeah. at Broadway.com. We didn't know each other until that day. Yes, we did. Now we know each day. other very well, <laughs> and we love working together. Uh, Thank so, you. So happy anniversary, Beth. Thank you very now much. Now get out of here, because Tamara right. Grace coming Bye in. Guys. Matt, why don't you fill us in on Tamara? I would love to. You might know Tamara or recognize Tamara from her turn on American Idol in 2002, but she's also appeared on Broadway in Bombay Dreams, and in Rent. She also toured uh, with If Then back in 2016, and now she is starring eight times a week in the Circle and the Square Theater as Papa Gay in Michael Arden's revival production of Once on This Island. And she's here to talk about that. And now here's Paul and Tamira. Hi, Tamira. Hi, Paul. Welcome back to Broadway. Thank you very How, much. How's it feeling? Oh, I feel so good. Yes. Papa Gay. Papa oh my gosh, Gay. I'm living my best life right now. <laughs> I mean, Papa Gay, it's so exciting because historically, Papa Gay has been played by men. Yes. And now women have taken over the Papa Gay role. Well, you know, we're trying <laughs> to put ourselves in it a little bit. <laughs> uh, how... Okay, so okay. Did you when did you first see the production? How did this all happen? Because you okay. joined in January. I joined in January. My first show Merle was Merle Dandridge opened yes. the show in the fall. Yes, um, I auditioned. I got a call. Uh, it was very strange because I was working on um, a musical idea with my husband that involved voodoo, and I didn't oh, know wow. anything about the show. And so I had come up with a whole bunch of themes that week, and it was a Saturday, super moon, and I'm laying outside like. How deep do I take my character? Like, I didn't know what the, the temperature was on Broadway, if they were doing, like, evil things and uh -huh. demonic stuff. So, you know, I sat there, and literally seven hours from that meditation, I got the audition to play Papa Gay. And I was like, oh, so all the way there. That's what you're telling me, universe. And So, wow, so yeah. you were already ready. You had the I research came down. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing the research for I your was own doing purposes. The research. <laughs> I love that. And then, did you get to see a Merle do? I did. Okay. Oh and then my obviously, gosh. when you sit down in that theater and experience what Mike Arden came up with with this gorgeous Aaron's and Flaherty show, it. I mean, what was your impression? Because you got to see it as an audience member first. Straight magic. I cried my eyes out. I watched Merle. She was sexy and yeah. sultry and just yummy. Yeah. And I was like, okay. This is, first off, this cast is incredible. Yeah. And the synergy between them is just, you, you feel it. It's very visceral. And I was like, so I'm going to need to go rehearse right after I see it. Mm -hmm. So I booked a rehearsal space at Shetler. And as soon as I saw the show, I went there for like, I don't know, I think an hour just to go over my sides and go over the song after I saw the show. Okay. And then went. To rehearse for your audition. To rehearse for my audition. Okay. And then I went back the next day again to just drill it one more time because I really wanted the character. I felt like it was a sign and I needed to go for it. And I went to the audition at uh, Telsey and I sat in there for a really long time. I sang um, the songs twice and then they asked me to come back and sing something from my book. And I did and then they asked me to sit and wait a little bit longer and come back for dim movement. And the following week, I found out that I booked it, and they were like, can you be here on Friday? And that was a Tuesday wow. <laughs> from California. Wow. So, so now you just said it, it's a sign. Wasn't that a song you sang in If Then? It was. <laughs> See that? Look at that. <laughs> yeah, because you played the role that LaShawn's, speaking of Once on This Island, yes. I mean, let's, you played that in the tour of yes. If Then, yeah. Kate. Was that a fun experience? That was great. That was actually, I took a five-year hiatus from everything. I had my daughter, and um, the year my son was graduating from high school, I got the call from Telsey, and I went back on the road. You were like, I'm ready. Let's do I'm this. ready. Let's yeah. do this. It's a yeah. sign. Um, and Shakalaka Baby, I first saw you in Bombay Dreams. Did you? Oh, yes. That's I love awesome. Wait a minute. I love Bombay Dreams. It wasn't it That amazing? show was crazy and beautiful. Yes. And that music. Incredible. I was obsessed with that music. Incredible. AR Rahman. I mean, that was like a crazy show and i remember the fountain mm -hmm. and right? you were just transported yes Completely. yes yeah yes. to bombay it was it was was that and that was your broadway debut, debut. 
And okay, so we can't, you know, not say American Idol. Season one, yes, American Idol. Yes, uh, that's where everyone first got to see your amazing talent and your amazing voice. So was making the leap to Broadway. So people were starting to do that, right? Mm -hmm. that, like people, were, it was. I remember that time where it was kind of like, who are we going to get next from American Idol on Broadway? You know, it became sort of like the it's, thing. Yeah, was that a yeah. natural? Were you already a theater person? I love musicals. Um, had I, I hadn't thought about it uh -huh. in terms of whether or not I wanted to make it a career choice. Uh -huh. uh, but and so my favorite musical at that time was Aida, and that was my dream. Like when I saw Heather Headley and Aida, I was like, okay. Okay, I want to do this. Every time I came to New York, I would go and see that show. I would take everyone to see it. Uh -huh. um, and so when after I finished Idol and doing uh, uh, Boston Public, they right. I had the audition come through, and I was like, okay, well let's let's give it a shot. And gosh, I'm so grateful that I did. Did you ever get to play Aida? I didn't. Yeah. Funny thing well, is that Aida came can? through right at the same time oh. as Bombay Dreams, and I had already auditioned and accepted, oh, wow. and so it was like, oh well. But can't we bring Aida back? People hey. want Aida back. I Matt Roden wants I Aida. think it's time Aida? for Aida. Oh Matt Roden is ready so? for that. Don't you think we're ready for an Aida revival? Yes. Oh my. I think now's like a I really good time. You still know the delighted. words? Delighted. Oh my gosh. I know. What is it? Um, <laughs> oh. Easy as life. Easy as life. Yeah. Easy. That's how you get. Yeah. I have a show in the two okay, hours. Okay, who would be your who would be your dream Rodimus? Rodimus. Oh, I haven't thought that far. Who do you want to be in the vault with? Spoiler. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. All right, okay. You also uh you were Mimi. I was Mimi. Yeah, speaking, yes. And of course Adam Pascal, the original Roger, yes. was um that, that that's what made me think of Look um, at all these connections. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah, all see these. that? See that hook? LaShawn's <laughs> Adam, it just Adam all Pascal. comes back together somehow, some <laughs> it's way, all always. Like, that's Broadway. Uh, and Rent, was that fun? Playing that was amazing. Yeah. And then I got to play it with Anthony and Adam. Oh. They came back um, oh, right. for the anniversary okay. yes. when I was there. Yeah. yeah. So that was an incredible ride. Yeah. I gave Mimi her first short mohawk red haircut. Oh, my God. And we just had Lexi Lawson here from uh, Hamilton, and she did the the tour that they did later as Fantastic. Mimi. Look at that. Look at the connection. We have all the boys' Mimi's here this week. <laughs> um, but once in this island, what, what is it like performing with the audience right there? It's great. It's the audience becomes part of the island, you uh -huh. know, and so there we interact with them during the pre-show and I come out with the goats and if Peapod's having a good day, I'll let them feed him. Sometimes he wants to headbutt, um, but he all they always get a big applause when they come out. Um, and it's just it's so immersive. Uh -huh. You know, to have the audience right there yeah. and, you know, there's no fourth wall. Right. And, you know, you feel as though the story encompasses everybody. I just realized it's like the cheapest island vacation to be had, right? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I'm the best, by the way. Without the waves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Matt Roden, yes. uh, do we have any questions from our online viewers? We do have some, and if you have questions for Demira, you should leave them in the comments right now, and we'll get to as many as we possibly can, starting off with Paul wants to know, not this Paul, not me. Paul Miller, do you do your American Idol friends come to see you perform? As a matter of fact, Diana DeGarmo came to the show last night, oh. her and Ace Young. Yes. Wow. Yes. So yes. Wow. So wh what do you think about American Idol coming back? I think when I see it's, the posters, I'm like, oh, my God, that's right. It's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting. I have no idea what yeah. it's going to be like. It's yeah. completely different format, I think. So yeah. we'll see. Is it a I'm going to look on Sunday and see what they've switched up. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But you're it, when you look back on that experience, I know it's been years now. Uh, what? Where, where is it at for you? Like, is it is it like a really happy time? Is it stressful time? Like, what do you? It was everything that I needed. Uh -huh. Everything. It was the perfect stepping stone. Um, I had been in and out of the studio since I was thirteen. Wow. I did pageants. I was Miss Atlanta. <gasps> everything was for me to get that opportunity to have a music career, mm -hmm. to to be seen. Mm -hmm. And so I always said when I was a kid, there was a show called Pop Stars. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Pop Stars was about a group, and they right. followed the group and their drama. And I was like, yeah, if they ever come up with a show that is for solo singers. Well, I don't have to I, deal with those other ladies. No, no, <laughs> no, don't good, no good. Um, then I'll audition. And I said that as a little kid. And they came up with a show. I was here in New York actually doing a Coca-Cola gig. And I was on the computer at my friend's house, 
and I heard, do you want to be a superstar? And I was like, wait, what? Huh? Like, yes. Sure. Yes, I'm actually. And I Googled um, where they were having auditions. And if they weren't having them in Atlanta, I was going to come to New York. Mm -hmm. And they did. And we were having a, like, a little hurricane that day. And so I stood outside in the rain because they weren't letting anybody in yeah. until the tail end when the rain and wind started to really pick up. Then they let us in. And <laughs> it was everything. Like, it was tough. Don't yeah. get me wrong. You know, they didn't know what they were doing on the first season. So we were the I guinea mean, pigs. You were the guinea pigs, yes. And we did everything that they asked us to do because we were like, absolutely, um, <laughs> this is going to get us what we want. So. By the time we got to the final four is when I started to lose my voice. Mm. And I was just like, if I can get a record contract from this experience, mm -hmm. that's all I want. Mm -hmm. That's all I want. And and so it gave me that plus some. Yeah. 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 And Simon Cowell loved you. Oh, I loved Simon. I still love Simon. He's awesome. Yeah, I love him too. He has a very limited wardrobe, but I love that about him. <laughs> it makes da it easy. Uh, David said, please describe Simon Cowell in three words. He is real, funny, and sarcastic. I like that. This is a good question from Robert. He says, hi, Tamira. What was the reaction like when you made your Broadway debut as someone coming in from a reality show? Do you feel like people reacted differently as you came in from a te televised process in comparison with someone who came in through the traditional training route? If they did, I never noticed it. Um, I was warmly received, and I felt nothing but love from the Broadway community, which in turn made me want to be a part of it more. I love that. Um, no, wait, I have a question. When you were mm -hmm. a pageant girl, what you I'm assuming singing was your talent. Singing you was like my juggling talent. Yes. <laughs> uh, live cooking on stage. Um, what What was your go to what Was your go to song? Uh, I believe the children are the greatest love of all. Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good one. That works. <laughs> um, Alec, any funny audience interactions? Uh, all of them involved with the go are involved with the goat. The because, goat. Um, well, this wasn't with the audience. It was with Norm. Sorry, Norm. Norm Lewis. Uh, with his first time feeding him, I told him to... You guys went in the same night. We did go in right. the same okay. night, yes. His first time feeding the pea pod, or Sparky, I think. I told him to put his, his hand flat. Give him the grape and flat. Mind you, I'm not a goat trainer, so I don't know all the details. I give, I do what they tell me. Mm -hmm. He feeds him, giving his this part first, and Sparky took a bite of it. No. And I was like, you fed him your hand. What did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> so now with the audience, I'm very careful to be like, okay, either give him a long collared or put your hand flat, and they won't chomp on your whole hand. Norm got his hand he chomped got his on the chomp, first he night? He got this part chomped. It wasn't the first night, but it was like oh, the first Norm. week or two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Miles, I think that's how you pronounce it, wants to know, how did you get started in theater, and what advice would you give to teens wanting to get into the industry? I My first theater um, job was this show called... Oh. Uh, Goodness, I can't remember. It was it was a one night thing, uh -huh. and we it was in Atlanta, and I auditioned, yeah, and it was like, it was hard and it was tough, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I would say to someone, sorry, I can't think of the name at the moment, um, looking for love in all the right the wrong places. There we go. Um, <laughs> too many faces too. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I would say stick with your craft, and if you love it, pursue it. And then don't take no for an answer because you'll get no more than you'll get yes. And it will be, um, you'll, you'll feel, uh, what's the word? Um, you'll want to give up. You'll mm. want to give up. But the, the no's are a means to make you stronger, to make you go deeper, and to make you really investigate what it is that it, you're trying to put across as, an, as a storyteller. So what are these shows you're creating with your husband? What's happening with you and your husband? Oh, my husband has ventured into script writing. Oh. And so he's been shopping um, a movie that he's written. Oh. And it's been going really well. And I wasn't, I wasn't auditioning. And uh -huh. so he I, I said to him one day, I was like, why don't we try to write a musical? And he was like, yeah, I like that, actually. He's like, that's one of your good ideas. And, you know, don't have many of them, according to him. Um, and so he, I, there was this book that I was reading that I really liked, uh -huh. and I wanted to look into that. And he was like, well, it's more fun to create your own. Huh? So why don't we explore creating our own? And so I just started coming up with themes. 
So this is and something we week. might see down the road. It's possible. It's uh, possible. I'm into it. Hey. Um, th- let's see here. David says, do you prefer writing music or singing? They go together. Mm-hmm. There's like no- Ramalama Lama, Lama yeah, kidding yeah. and a ding dong. Kidding and a ding dong. dong. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, right. uh, being so close to the audience, what audience reaction to Papa Gay fuels your performance? <laughs> when I do my Twitch, in um, during um, gosh, come on, brain, we have a show. It's not that it's not working. Um, uh, promises and the one before. What's the title? It's the only song that I sing. Your song? Yes. Papa Gay's song. Uh, it, you can just say it, Amani. Say it, please. My brain. There we go. Forever yours. Oh, of course. And forever yours Thank when you, I come Imani out of the Punch, boat. Thank you. The fabulous show publicist <laughs> who we love. I have, you know. Forever I, yours. Yeah, forever that's scary yours. in that number. Yes. And when I get on the boat and she says, trade mine for his and um, my soul for his. And I do this like twitching with my body and I can always hear the audience go. <gasps> and so it's like, ooh, they can well, feel you're, it. You're drama. I mean, you have to like put on, there's a lot of, like when Papa Gay walks on stage, there's a lot. Oh, it's, it's a lot. so good. Yeah. It's a lot <laughs> of black that? makeup and red. And it's funny, when we did our makeup test, uh. um, Cookie, our, our wonderful uh, designer, she filled my entire face black. And oh, it was wow. one half of it was red and half of it was black. Wow. And it was like the dichotomy of Papa Gay. And I was fully black paint, like wow. super deep. And I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And I have the black nails to match it. Um, but then uh, Clint, our costume designer, was like, we need to tone it down a little bit. I can't see her face. <laughs> but I was all in. I was all in. Let's take it, take it all the way there. Because she showed me some pictures that she took of of people who actually portray Papa Gay in Haiti, and they are head to toe in black paint. Uh-huh. The only thing you see wow. is yeah, Papa the Gay's white a real eyes. a real god, by yeah, the way. That's, yeah. there's, there's research in all this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and we even talked about doing um, cigarette stains on my teeth. Oh my god! Like I wanted to just go in because it's like deep. if you're gonna do it, do why it. not? Yes, live it. Nobody needs cigarette stains. On their teeth. <laughs> she did. Eventually, she was like, you'd hate that after taking it off every show, eight shows a week. Well, Tamara, how long are you going to be in Once on this Island at the Circle on the Square Theater? Oh, I am going to, I would say, come before the summer. Okay. All right. Fabulous. Well, everyone, you we talk about Once on this Island a lot. A lot. <laughs> on Live at 5 and at Broadway.com. We love this show. You have to go see it. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank I'm so you happy you're back me. on Broadway. Thank you. I thank can't wait you. to me see, too. like, maybe... Maybe you will an original musical out of you. I don't hey, know. Hey, that would be a beautiful, know. beautiful thing. Thank you Thank so much. You. Matt, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and you can watch us live every single weekday. You already know this. At 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page. If you want a different way to consume this show, you can subscribe to the Live at 5 podcast, which comes out every single day right after Live at 5. Thank you guys for joining us. Join us tomorrow when uh, Megan Pacerno, I think that's how you pronounce her name, yes. right? Megan Pacerno from Love Never Dies, the national tour. She's in New York City. She's stopping by the studio. We will see you then. Bye, everybody.